I got some emails I want to share with you. I got some, I got three emails here, three that I got from friends, friends, subscribers. All my subscribers are my friends until you pissed me off and then I had to block you and hide you my channel from you, but I don't have very many of those. I want to discuss these. These, these. these emails bring up some good points about some things that I want to talk about. Medicare Part B, renouncing your citizenship, buying a car, all right? That keeps coming up. And then also uh, a, a, another visa question that came up. And I'm going to discuss all these with you as soon as I come back. Hey. Oh, rock a cheek. Hello there. So the first thing I want to talk about is I've got an email from a friend, Tom. Tom is a fairly new subscriber, and he um, keeps in touch with me, and he, and, we, he, and he sent me an email, and he brought up some good points that I think are worthy of discussion. Uh, the subject matter of the email is Medicare and renouncing citizenship. So here it goes. Hola, Don. I've been doing some research and came up with some information you may find useful regarding being an expat and Medicare or a replacement plan, as well as information for those folks considering renouncing citizenship. So right off the bat, I, I want to ask if there's anybody that can please explain to me in the comment section below, or you can send me an email, why on earth would anybody want to renounce their citizenship? I, I totally don't get it. I, I can't think of a reason, a logical, reasonable reason for renouncing their citizenship from the country that you were born in and raised in, and particularly in the United States. Why, why would anybody that's drawing Social Security and getting Medicare benefits want to renounce your citizenship and lose all that. So if somebody can explain that to me, I'm all ears. I'd love to hear, I'd like to hear all about it. But we went on, he went on to talk about, we all know that Medicare doesn't cover medical needs outside the USA. I contacted Medicare about some options such as dropping the Part B coverage, which currently costs $170.10 a month and maintaining only Part A, which is no cost. And, and the next sentence is the reason why I wanted to bring this up. If one drops Medicare Part B, as best I can tell, this cannot be done online. Tom, I did on my, I did mine, I dropped mine online. I did it sitting right here in Ecuador, and I did it online. I logged on to the My Social Security portal, and I dropped Medicare Part B, and Two months later, I started receiving an additional $140 in my Social Security. Did it all online. Didn't have to go to an office. Did nothing. I've only been to one Social Security office my whole life, and it wasn't for this. I, boy, do I have some opinions about some things I saw in that office, but that, that would be a very uh, sensitive subject and probably open up a can of worms that we wouldn't be able to handle. He said one has to go into a social security office to fill out some paperwork to drop that coverage. If this coverage is dropped and one wants to restart it at a later date, there is a penalty for doing so. That penalty is 10% of premium cost per year that one has dropped the coverage. So if I were to drop Part B and go to Ecuador for five years, and then want to return and start it up again, there would be a penalty of 50% more in cost, plus having to meet some conditions of reinstatement. I, everybody has their own excuses for keeping Medicare Part B or not having it. I personally, I think now $170, me personally, I think it's a total rip. Uh, it, but that's just my case. The only medication that I take, which is what Part B is really good for, is prescription drug coverage and office visits and some other incidentals. You know, the important stuff. 
Part A, I believe, is hospitalization. Part B is basically medical. Uh, to me, the whole system sucks. I, it's, it's so screwed up. Uh, and I, I, I can get my blood pressure medicine. I can get a 90-day supply still today at Walmart for $10. That's the only, but, but that's just me. That, you know, there are, I know I have friends that have probably spend more than $170 a month on prescription drugs, and I feel, I feel for them. And if that being the case, you know, then you, you got to have Part B. Folks, if you're so tied to Part B, don't leave the country, you know. I don't plan to go back to the United States, but I'm not saying that I won't. In my particular case, if I go back to the United States, I'm not going to reinstate Part B. No way. No way in hell. I'm not going to pay $170 a month to cover a $4 prescription. And yeah, you're right. I could get sick. Anything could happen. But I'm not banking on it. And, and in my particular case, I have one advantage that a lot of people don't have is I'm a veteran. And I'm enrolled in the Veterans Health Care Plan, and I get my prescription coverage done through that. If I had to go back to the United States for a medical emergency or medical long-term care uh, requirement, the VA is going to take care of me. I don't know if it's going to be the best or not, but who cares? I don't care. So that's something if you think about, folks. If you're going to come to Ecuador and you're drawing Social Security and you're paying for Medicare Part B, maybe it's a good idea. I'll go out on a limb here and give some advice, okay? I know you're going to think, Don, whoa, wait, you're giving advice? Um, yeah, I'm going to give some advice here. If you're drawing Social Security and you're, you're, they're deducting $170 a month from your Social Security to cover Medicare Part B, and you come to Ecuador, don't drop Part B for at least a year. Give yourself time to make sure that this is where you want to be. I preach this all the time. It falls right in line with what I say about buying a house, buying property here, selling all your stuff, abandoning everything, and coming to Ecuador. There's a very good chance well, I wouldn't say a very good chance, but there is a likelihood that you may not like it here. And you may end up having to recoup and go back and start working on a plan B. And you don't want to have to pay a penalty to reinstate Medicare Part B just because you dropped it, you know, on a whim. So, yeah, you're right. You heard it here. You heard it from me. I am giving advice today. Don't drop Part B if you think there's a chance that you might be going back to the U.S. Give it at least a year. If anywhere you go, give it time. Slow down. Be rational. Don't be so quick to, you know, drop that coverage. So anyway, so Tom went on, to, you know, to say some other things about all this and and. You know, and then he went down on to say a very important reason for one to maintain their USA citizenship is that there are some substantial taxes one has to pay. There is a $2,350 exit tax that is mandatory and charged to anyone desiring to renounce their citizenship, plus a tax bill from the IRS for any unpaid income tax. Why would there be any unpaid income tax? If you're a responsible citizen, you, you, you don't owe income tax. You, you pay it at the end of the year. You pay it during the year when you're getting your paychecks. And if you have some, if you owe some at the end of the year, which in my opinion is just bad management, but that's just my opinion. My opinion, $20 won't get you a cup of coffee, not even in Ecuador. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be owing any taxes anywhere. But that's, a, that's another video. Please, folks, reserve your comments on that, okay? I don't, let's not get into an argument over paying taxes because I know there are some of you that are probably foaming at the mouth right now waiting for me to shut up so you can get in the comment section and 
tell me about how bad it is to pay taxes and why you shouldn't pay during the year and so forth. Anyway, back to the back to the email. Uh, plus a tax bill of the IRS round pay payment. There are some conditions that had to be met, but most everyone would meet at least one of these conditions that would be substantial depending on assets and net worth. I st- I don't understand why anybody would want to renounce their citizenship. I just like I said in the beginning, I I don't get that at all. If you can think of a reason, a sound logical reason for renouncing your citizenship, please put it in the comment section. Let me hear about it. Save yourself that money, <laughs> you know. So the uh, second email that I got that I wanted to discuss is from a friend of mine, John. Um, he's a retired attorney, or maybe he's still practicing, I don't know, but he's, he says that, Hi Don, I am here on a professional visa, which is easy for to qualify for, college degree and $425 a month, easy peasy. Investor visa makes no sense to me for the reasons you mentioned. Also, there is a 4% exit tax on money you take out of the country. So, the reason why I brought this up is because I want to make sure that you understand this exit tax. Lasso, the president here, when he came into office, decided to abolish the exit tax. But he didn't just do it in one fell swoop. He's doing it 1% per year until it's gone. Okay? Now, that's what was said at the, this time last year. And like all, everything else here in Ecuador, everything is subject to change. I'm sad to say. So it doesn't necessarily mean, I mean, it, yeah, you're right. When I came here, the exit tax was 5%. Now it's 4%. This time next year, it'll be 3%. You know? If you come here and you invest a bunch of money in CDs and you earn interest, interest on it, spend it here. I use my interest money to pay for my living expenses here, you know. But I just wanted to bring that up. There, everything, uh, everything, you know, is so, so subject to change here. And I don't know how important that, this is probably not important to a lot of people who are just going to come here on a pensioner's visa and, and not invest. But as it stands right now, if you come here and you earn money here, that money that you want to take out and take back home with you if you decide to go back, you are going to pay a penalty for it. The way I look at it and the way I rationalize it is that I earn 8% on my CDs. I, there is a small percentage that I'm at to pay an income tax to the United States. And if I had to pay, you know, an exit tax, then that just reduces the amount of money that I earn. But I'm still ahead. You know, so instead of earning 8%, I'll earn 4% minus the small percentage for taxes. Still better than what you can get on CDs in the United States. That's the best way I can explain that. So then, John also brought up, take a look at this. This guy seems to have some experience with cars here. I think he gives some good tips. He's talking about our friend Mr. Second Passport. Lord. I can't believe that I actually sat down and watched a full Mr. Second Passport video. I even took notes. See? Notes. Mr. Second Passport gave 16 bullet points about buying cars here in Ecuador. And I'm here to tell you, hang on to your hat, folks. I agreed with 14 of those bullet points. I agreed. But I gotta say one thing. Mr. Second Passport didn't say a damn thing in this video about buying a new car. Everything that he said in all these bullet points, okay, all points to buying used cars. With the exception of maybe, I mean, he never actually said used or new. But most of these bullet points, like, do not buy an automatic. Okay, well, he didn't say new or used, but I agree with that. I mean, I'd, I'd, I would like to have an automatic, but it doesn't make sense to buy an automatic car with an automatic transmission here in Ecuador because hardly anybody has one. 
probably hardly anybody works on an automatic transmission. Manual stick shift transmission cars are cheaper by a few thousand dollars, believe it or not. So, you know, I agreed with him on that. He said, don't buy a Chinese-made car. Resale value is very poor. I agreed with him on that. I looked at a car the other day in the mall. It was a Feng Dong. F-E-N-G-D-O-N, something like that. Feng Dong. Feng Dong. So, you have to say that nasally, okay? So, uh, but I mean, the car was a nice looking car. sitting sit in the mall under all the bright lights and looked pretty and shiny. And I opened it up and looked inside and it had leather interior. It had full navigation, nice clean dash. It was a really nice looking car. But then I also noticed I saw an awful lot of plastic. And I just saw a lot of little things that just looked really cheap. Like the buttons on the dash and, and you know, I just thought, I just got a kind of a gut feeling that I don't think I'd like to have this car. It was cheap. It was less than twenty thousand dollars, but I, I, I don't. I can't imagine having to try to sell it or resell it. Don't buy a former taxi. Well, that's pretty much a given. I mean, you, you say that about the United States. Don't buy from a private seller with a blank contract. Okay, folks. I've, I've heard horror stories about people buying cars from individuals here, and then they go to register it, and then they find out that there's liens filed against it from previously unpaid taxes and stuff and you know I hate to say it I'm not saying this to be say bad about the extra drawing people but based on I mean I gotta agree with Mr. Second Passport on this one I wouldn't buy a private I wouldn't buy a car from a private seller with a blank contract there's no way he said avoid the big car fares I agree with that avoid temptation to buy European cars I agree with that avoid Fords he said they're assembled in Venezuela. I, I, I say I wrote down here. I agree, but you know, <laughs> I wouldn't have a Ford anyway. Sorry. Avoid the hybrids, electric cars. I agree with that too, because I mean I can see the day when they will be sensible here. Maybe a hybrid is okay now. I have friends here that have hybrid cars. I definitely wouldn't buy an electric car here. I haven't seen. I don't think I've seen. Not one electric car since I've been here. Get expert assessments of the car. You wouldn't get an expert assessment on a new car, but you definitely would on a used car. Plates matters. The first letter of the plate indicates what province is from. And so if you buy a used car that's from the coastal region, you can pretty much bet you're going to deal with saltwater corrosion. Don't travel long distance in Ecuador to buy a car. I don't agree with that at all. I, 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 I don't see what the problem is with that at all. Who cares? Ecuador is the size of Arizona. So, so what if I go to Cuenca to buy a car or go to Quito to save a few hundred bucks or maybe even a thousand? I'm not going to buy my car in Monta just for that reason. He says what to buy. Chevy, Kia, Hyundai. Resellable parts available. I agree with that. I'll probably buy a Chevy or a Kia. I'm not sure. Don't buy a car that's no longer in production. Well, that's kind of a given. Mind the motor size. That is a biggie. That car that I looked at in the mall, the, that Feng Dong car, it had a 1.7 liter Mitsubishi motor in it. A 1.7 liter motor. I, I can't see you trying to drive a car with that small of a motor. That's a lawnmower motor. Don't buy a car with financing. I agree with that. I'm going to pay cash for my car. You would, I wouldn't buy a car here and pay 17, 18, 19, 20, 28% interest. BS. Be wary of scams like mall cars. There are companies that will set up displays in malls and all of a sudden they're in the car selling business and you can imagine how that goes. Okay, so that's what I got to say about that, okay? I've had some people leave comments that, you know, I said, I talked about how dangerous it is to buy drive a car here, and, and it's true. It's dangerous, but you know what? You know, I, a few months ago I said I would never drive a car here, but I changed my mind. I'm going to take my chances and I'm going to drive a car here. I figure if all these taxi drivers that can't see over the steering wheel can drive 
I can drive and I can see over the steering wheel. So I got another couple more questions from Mark and then we're almost done here. Uh, hi Don, I really enjoy your videos and honest information you share. I have two questions that came as a result of your most recent Q&A, if you don't mind. I'm 62 from the U.S. and I'm currently retired in Thailand, but I'm considering moving to Cuenca next year for a new adventure. Good choice, Mark. You'll love Cuenca. You mentioned that you used Gringo Visa to get your visa, but then recommended Equisys. Was there an issue with Gringo Visa that made you recommend Equisys instead? No. I didn't even know about Equisys when I made my deal with Gringo Visa. I never even heard of them. I did all my stuff in the United States. And I got Gringo Visa from uh, Amelia and JP. Because uh, I mistakenly followed them for a, a period of time and sunk money, gave them money, and uh, let's not go into that. But I'm sure glad I don't have to do that shit anymore. Anyway, I, 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 I can't, I, I, I support both Gringo Visa and Equisist. Gringo Visa does visa work. Equisist does visa work, and they do a few other things too. You need a good lawyer for anything here in Monta, Equisist is the place to go. I believe, I'm not real sure, I, maybe I may end up making a follow-up video on this, but I don't think Gringo Visa does anything but visa work. So, and now Gringo Visa has an office here in Monta. So I don't have any particular loyalty to either one of them. I, I, I'm loyal to both of them. I, I say my, my recommendation, well, I, no, here's some more, here's some advice. Look at this, folks, I'm, I'm starting to give advice. Talk to both of them and then figure out which one you like and go with the one that you like. Maite, the owner of Gringo Visa, is a super nice woman. Super nice woman, very nice person. Genuine, kind, wants to help. Marcos at Equisys, same thing. Super staff, super helpful people. I recommend them both. But you, here's my advice to you, get in touch with both of them and let them know that you're talking to the other one. And then you make the decision. And if they're both the same price, then you just figure out who you like the best. And that's who you go with. I don't have anything bad to say about Gringo Visa or Equisist. I have nothing but good. I've heard complaints from both, but these are complaints from people that had their own individual circumstances and problems, and I, I'm not going to blame it on the law firms. You know, they're just doing the best they can with what they've got. I hope that answers your question, Mark. For transferring money into your JEP account, do you know if I could use WISE, formerly TransferWISE, instead of wire transfers? Well, isn't WISE a wire transfer? That's what I used to transfer money from my U.S. account to my Thai account now, and it works great. The money is usually in my account in seconds. I went to WISE's website, and I can't see anything in there that indicates that they will let you wire money to Ecuador. I don't believe they do. I couldn't find anything. They, I, I saw their list of companies that they will wire money to, and Ecuador is not on that list. At, at I bank at Swab. Swab has Zelle. I use Zelle to pay my rent to my landlord who happens to be located in Florida. I've used Zelle to pay for my dental work here in Monta. Didn't cost me anything. To get my money here for my CDs, I use the wire transfer, but they since JEP is a co-op, they, they're, they're not a member of the, the SWIFT banking system, so they, they can't accept a wire transfer from a U.S. bank direct. You have to do a domestic transfer from your U.S. bank to their associate bank in Miami called Bank of Pachincha, and then Bank of Pachincha will send the money to JEP. It takes a couple of days, 
You have to pay a fee to swab. So be it. Just pay it. So to answer your question, Mark, no, I don't. I don't believe you can use Wise. If you can, if anybody knows any differently, please, you know, uh, let us know in the comment section. All right, and I'll make a correction. How do you pay your utility bills? Is it in cash at each place, through a banking app, other, all of the above? My electric bill, I pay. I go to Western Union in the mall. There was one time I was able to pay it online through Jet, but then something changed, and now all of a sudden I can't. I pay my insurance bill through JEP, through a direct withdrawal, a debit from my savings account there. I pay my gas bill at Western Union. My phone bill, my Scleral cell phone bill, I pay through the app at JEP. Everything else, you pretty much take cash and go to either Western Union or in the mall here in Monta. There's a little store, it's a little postal annex. They call it a postal annex, if you can believe that. I don't know where they got postal from, but that's what they call it. You can deliver stuff from there, and I guess you can receive stuff too. But anyway, you can pay your bill there too. It's been my understanding that you can pay your bills at just about any store in this town that has a point of sale system, that has a register. You take your cedula and your bill and you pay it with cash and you pay them a small fee, 35 cents or something like that, and it's done. And then here's where Mark really threw me off. By the way, I'm pretty sure that in Ecuador, a JEP account and a bank account are two different things. No, no Mark, they're not two different things. A JEP, JEP is a bank, JEP is a bank. It's a, it's a cooperative, it's a credit union. That's a bank. I don't know where you're getting this from, where they're two different things. That's not true. I think you had to be a permanent resident to get an actual bank account. No. No, that's not true. You can open a bank account at JEP with your passport. You can visit, come and visit, and say, I want to have a bank account here. And you can take 25 bucks and go to JEP with your passport and open a bank account. You can buy CDs, okay? So anyway, that's it, folks. That's all I got for this one. I hope this does you some good. Hope you get something out of it. Hopefully I brought up some, some topics here that will uh, uh, invite some conversation, okay? If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you don't like it and you want to give me a thumbs down, knock yourself out, okay? I don't care. There's... I could, I could say the nicest thing, I could give the best news of the century on this channel, and there's some anal pour, well, there's two, that immediately give me, <laughs> see you on the next one. Ciao, ciao. Last year, last year was a sad year for my family. Last year, my mom should have been celebrating her 60th birthday. But because of drugs, alcohol, and other terrible decisions, we all forgot. <laughs>